and say, baby, won't you be my girl? Would you meet me at the Friday dance and give romance a whirl? Let's take a chance, our happiness sake, baby, won't you be my girl? Won't you be my girl? I said, baby, won't you be my girl? Uh, this is a hand here. Definitely, I can, I can open on the button. Not sure if I want to call a low jack open, but Kato's. I was kind of considering maybe like taking a stand, playing you know, playing this hand against Kato, heads up in position. Um, now. Matt here calls. I don't know if that incentivizes me to call here as well. Ah, I was planning to fold, but something, something, pot odds. Something, something, pot odds. Cool. I'm gonna continue to bet. I have quite a few ways to make a really powerful hand. Half size pot bet, 20. I think we're just gonna call and reevaluate a turn. Well, that was absolutely the best card I could have seen. I'm just gonna continue betting, hoping that he has a queen, I can drag him in, or make him pay for any flushes, although I know all the ace X of clubs are out because I have the ace of clubs. There's about $80, 85 in the pot right now. This time I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. 75. I'm gonna say something. Don't worry, I'm still trying to figure out what's in the pot. Uh, let's see. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 45, 40, 40 bet. 80, 100. 20, 20 bet. 85, does 85 in the pot? He leads over 75 here, which is surprising to me. I mean, obviously we've we've uh, hit our straight here. I'm surprised he's leading out here. Um, the question is, do we just call or do we raise i mean i think a lot of times here we're probably chopping bluffs here i guess are clubs and i don't block clubs um i don't know if it's likely that he has clubs that just a physical tell i saw him he checked his hand which to me suggests that maybe he doesn't have clubs here um if i raise what can i get value from i guess if he's i guess hmm Maybe some like two pairs, things like that. But even from two pairs, if I blast again a river, I don't think I'm getting much value. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and slow play this one and hope no clubs come on the river. Very early. <clears throat> I'm very relieved to see that he called that turn, and now I'm sitting with the absolute nuts. I'm gonna go for some serious value. He may even think he has the best hand and want to re-raise me. He could easily have a queen, which would be wonderful. He could easily have two pair. I hope he's got another one of those sets against me that he had previously, but there's about $250 in the pot right now. I'm gonna go for an over bet. Try to look polarizing, or frankly, I could check it to him and try to get it with, with a re-raise if I really think he has something like a queen that he'll call or the, that he'll raise me with. But I would hate for him to check back like King Jack. Three 
Looks like a $350 bed. That's a huge over bed. And I was pretty sure the pot was only 230. So I just want, now I'm just redoing the math make sure. Most of this is just me trying to figure out what the pot size is, isn't it? Oh dear Lord. Yeah, 50, 15, 45, and then 20 dollars 20, 85. And then these are 75, 85, 75, 75, 150, 85, 200, and 35. The only thing I'm losing here too is, is ace, is ace queen. Now the question is, do I call or raise? The question is, do I call or raise? If I raise, is there anything worse that can call? What does he think I have? What does he think I have? Maybe he's got a set. Like could be, you could have kings, tens, knights, jacks. Um, hmm. they, those might call. I could potentially be repping, you know, some missed flush draw. Because his line, oh dear lord. Okay, what happened? He leads out flop, leads out turn, leads out river, just bets, bets, bets. I think I can get value from sets in two pairs, so I think I'm gonna raise here, and I'm gonna go ahead and raise. I'm gonna go raise large and polarize my bet here. 325, how much do I have left here? I have 1100 here. Do I? I think I have to go for it here. Probably, most likely. If he has ace queen, that would really, really suck. Oh man, this is a tough spot. Do I? I really hope it doesn't feel like I'm still rolling here. I'm, this is just like a lot higher stakes than I've ever played, and I, I just don't want to fuck this up. I think I have to go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Go. Did he say call? He said he said call. Yeah. Oh. Nice hand, Kato. Nice hand. Thanks. Greg goes all out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we can three bet this, I think. I googled once. Um, everyone's doing 50 when they three bet, but fuck them. Do 45. 45 is the bet. All right, we have an open and a three piece. And we will be having no piece. So, uh, I actually wish I'd raised bigger here. I think Kato defending pretty wide should incentivize me to do that a bit on his big blind. I have no idea how deep Ryan is. Awesome. All right, so yeah, I'm not folding. Um, this hand could four bet, could call. I think in this hijack versus button configuration, being out of position, uh, four betting is pretty attractive, but it does have some downsides in that we might end up four bet folding our equity. But I think we're gonna win the pot the highest percentage of the time that way. I'm a little less sure about uh, maximizing the EV, but I think this is gonna be better. 45 is his three bet. I wanna go at least three X out of position, but probably closer to three and a half. Four, I think is kind of overkill given his stack depth because we just, if we do four bet fold, it's kind of uh, kind of disastrous the bigger that we go. 
Um, so we're gonna make it an even 150. One fifty is the best. One fifty. I don't know what I'm doing now. I mean, the idea of three betting polarized is that it makes it easy when you get four bet. Is this 150, Conrad? That's what I was saying. Um, so, I reckon I should just fold. You know what, let me do what I say I should do. <coughs> Got him. Finally. to us and we have something we are going to raise easy raise 15 six-handed this is a pretty good hand but I just would prefer to stay out of trouble So we finally, obviously, pick up a hand. Um, we should be three betting a lot, but then we have to be um, playing out of position against a player who is not super likely to fold to, uh, you know, a single street. So it's going to be uncomfortable playing post, but it's a mandatory um, three bet. And out of position, I'm going to pick a larger sizing of 60, which is 4x. <clears throat> All right, so we have a three piece and we are not going to be four betting this hand. What is it to 60? Uh, yeah, so we're just going to be calling here. Yeah, easy, easy. So um, we obviously miss, uh, there's a chance we have the best hand here. Uh, you know, he has a lot of king jack, king 10, king nine, uh, worse aces. Uh, there's also a possibility he has queen x, which obviously is pretty good here. Um, I don't think that there's any merit in betting if I'm assuming my opponent's not gonna fold, so. I think we're probably going to play the street as a check call. Um, we unblock clubs, so that kind of bodes well for us. But yeah, I think we have the best hand pre, and then we just are forced to check call, check fold, depending on you know just evaluating how he bets, what he bets, the sizing. I guess is the most important thing. So that's what I'm going to do. Check. All right, so through that check, so we have some high cards out there, um, probably just defending most small pairs. So there's going to be some check calling here. I guess there's probably yeah, maybe some traps occasionally, but um, I think that I'm going to start betting to get hands that are better than mine to fold. Uh, let's see, so he made it 60 pretty, I think. Yeah, so we've got about 120 in there. I'm gonna start small bet here and go from there. So against a bet of $40 into a pot of $125, which is a normal third sizing. I think we can justify a call here. Um, you know, 
because this is button versus big blind, we know that like I'm not supposed to necessarily be having that many queen x or over pairs. Um, so he could absolutely be exploiting that. Uh, he also has a lot more like 8x than me, but the amount of 8x he has is very slim. So we're gonna call one and uh, evaluate a turn and see what he does. And we're also going to check turn on every single card that comes, so. Check. Okay, so I hate this card. I think a good bit of the, oh, I also actually, I was gonna say, he probably check calls jacks, tens, nines. I have 10 nine, so it's a bit more jacks, huh? Ace King is also, I think, check calling. So I can get jacks to fold if I bet here. And then if it's Ace King, I can still get there and we get some nice value when we bet the river. Yeah, I mean, if it does have jacks, then we need to bet here, so. And then hitting one won't matter, so if we like check to get there, it just sucks anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna bet here, check call 40. Uh, let's see, get a 200 out there. Let's go, yeah, half pot, I think. So this is a pretty good turn card. Um, I'm considering raising here as a bluff and then firing big on the river. Uh, I think that it is definitely possible for us to be running into an eight um, at some frequency here. And it's an amazing card for him actually, if he has an eight, because he knows that I have a lot of kings and queens uh, in my range. So I think that I'm gonna do something that I don't very often do and uh, raise here. Uh, as a bluff, although I'm not sure that it's the correct move because I don't think that any King X would necessarily actually raise here for value. Uh, but I'm gonna try and put him into a spot here. So we're going to, I think, raise to 375. All right. The old check crazy, huh? What do we got is that? Three? I mean, I guess I'll talk through this, but I'm just like not calling. Uh, what is it? One, two, three, for reference. So 375, huh? All right, so we have the old trap, huh? Trap, he hopes I have an eight. Got to start uh, building the pot. No value in calling here. Jack's fold to this turn bet. Ace King doesn't raise here. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna be folding, but we gotta think just a second here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That's it. I'm a knit, right? I thought I was a knit. And... Hmm? There's not the thing to say like, oh, you had the best hand anyway. Oh, did I? Yeah, no, well, do you ever hear like people say that? I know? was, I was just the, the problem there is that I was actually considering calling uh -huh. because like what King X ever does that for value there? It's like they're just gonna call like hundred percent of the time. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, <laughs> I figured. I don't know. You got a Probably. lot of boats there. That was a fun one. <laughs> you can have a lot of boats. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah for sure. Yeah. Right, we got dirt, see it. In my game with one three blinds, doesn't really matter too much to win $4, but here you're winning $10 if you scoop the blinds and this is definitely good enough hand to raise with. So I'm just gonna stick with my standard 15. I'm kind of conflicted in this situation because I have a relatively good hand in the sense that I have a suited hand that can make straights and flushes. Uh, the problem here is that if I'm going to three bet this hand, again, I'm never getting folds from Kato. 
Um, it's the only way to really isolate because I know that Matt is strong enough 100% to know that Kato's opening extremely wide on the button and I cap the shit out of myself by flatting here. So I think I am forced to fold exclusively due to my positional disadvantage. Um, and considering that the player that I want to isolate will literally never fold, and this hand wants to generate folds as well as playing post. And it also plays post like shit because it's out of position. So we're gonna fold, but it's tilting the shit out of me to fold. I thought we were gonna see two in a row there from Alex, but uh, I think that with how wide Kato's opening, I, this is a very clear defend to this size. Would maybe fold a 4X, but. Uh, gonna be calling here. <clears throat> Checking range. All right, well, if you're hitting, you're hitting, I definitely am today. I'm just gonna continue betting, build a pot, apply aggression. Uh, I don't mind a, a larger pot size. Close to pot size bet, 25. 25. All right, so uh, I guess this is a pretty reasonable sizing on this board, roughly two thirds. Um, with second pair, backdoor flush draw, just really no, uh, no options here other than call, I don't think. Maybe with bottom pair, we could check raise, but I think middle pair is probably a little too good. Um, going to be calling, and there's a lot of cards where I'm just going to have to check fold turn, but uh, we get to call one and check basically every turn as well. So I think he just assumes that I'm continuation betting, and uh, that's kind of what I'm going for, but my hand is not that great that I need to be going for three streets of value, especially with the board pair. I wouldn't put in, be surprised if he called me with any pair. And so just to play it safe, I'm gonna go ahead and check and maybe we can get a little bit of money on the river. So not surprised to see Kato check back this turn card. Uh, I think it's perceived to be sort of my card most players won't see that flop with bottom pair here. And so when the bottom card pairs, it's generally seen as my card. But as I was just talking about on flop, I would check raise some of the bottom pairs. So it's not as big of a range card as it might otherwise be. And that's why I didn't really consider leading turn at all. Um, now, the problem is because he's gonna probably perceive it as a more of a range card for me than it is. He probably actually has a fair bit of Queen X that checks back the turn. And uh, this river card is pretty bad for us as well in the sense that a lot of his kind of like light give ups end up making a pair here. I don't think he has too many flushes, but he ends up making a pair pretty non-zero. Uh, however, this hand still has some showdown value against under pairs, some ace highs, and I guess we're chopping with an eight if he see best flop with an eight. So I don't think there's any real purpose to turning this hand into a bluff. We just mostly get called by better folds for Morse, I think. Um, so yeah, I think I'm checking. It's actually kind of a similar spot to a hand I played against Ryan, where it was like a very clear flop call, turn checked through, and the river is just probably gonna be a check fold. I just have so many better hands to check call with. So unless it's some outrageous size and or we get some kind of a read, uh, which is hard to bank on, uh, probably just check folding. Check. That's a very interesting river card. Improves my hand, but straights are there, flushes are there, full houses are there. I have top two, but it, it's basically worthless on this board. If you would have bet, depending on the sizing, I may have been able to find a fold, but probably not. I do get myself in trouble with these hands often, uh, you know, going for a thin value, but what am I trying to extract value against? A queen, maybe? And I don't seem really getting to the river with much else. Um, but I think I am just gonna throw in a small bet and just try to squeeze a little bit of value. He could definitely have 
some queen X's, some eight X's that will call. And if it, and I can always just toss it away. So looks like we're facing 40 here. And uh, yeah, this is just a pretty normal size that I think you can do with every queen in range pretty much. Um, I'm not sure if you would really value a 10 here or not, but I think it's pretty irrelevant. It's similar to the hand against Ryan. It's just actually a little bit hard to find bluffs here. Like he has to bluff ace jack, ace king, ace nine, where like, I actually think those have some small bit of showdown value. Now, whether he feels they have showdown value or not, I guess is more prevalent, but um, we just have a lot of better hands here. I think I would check a lot of my queen X on this river. I get here with some very non-zero amount of 10 X as well. And most of my 10 X will be blocking straights, um, which might not be super relevant, but I think it's still better than this hand. So I'm just gonna pull. to us and we can play this hand. So let's see. Uh, yep, we're gonna open. That was something special at first, um, but we're going to continue here. And what did we make it? 14, 30, 15. All right, let's do 10. Okay. So, we're uh, just defended. You can have some ace x, some line x, deuce, some three four, some like straighty draw stuff, some four five. Uh, we could continue to value bet. Sometimes we're going to be value owning ourselves. Um, when he has ace x, nines for check, we are basically giving up. So. If I am targeting like a 2x, a 2-4, 2-5, I don't even know if we're really going to have that unless it's suited, but... Hmm. Check, give up, basically fold any bet on the river, or try to get a thin value bet in. I think I am going to go thin here. What makes worse hands comfortable? Let's go... Uh, I think it's 15. Really tiny bet, but we can't fold. I don't think we can raise, so I'm just gonna call again. Go. I'm just gonna check call this one. Alright, now the decision is, do we try to get a 9 to fold, or do we just accept our fate and we just basically, I, I mean, for what we're evaluating on the turn, we can still win here sometimes. Uh, but, um, hmm, try to get a 9 to fold is the question right now. Ace is obviously not folding. Do we try to get a 9 to fold? Do we have enough showdown with 6? And, um, yeah, no backdoor flush came in, so hmm, we were probably betting turn to get to showdown too a little bit, right? Probably a little tournamenty, but, hmm. I, gosh, 
Ace isn't folding. The question is, do we bet to try to get a nine to fold? I'm gonna try to get a nine to fold here. So let's see, what do we bet? 15, 35, 10, 15, 55, um, 85. So I think we need to be around like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, let's see here. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go ahead and call here, but I'm just wondering what what he has that he opens. Bet small flops, bet small's turn. And then bet slightly larger on the on the river. To me, it doesn't it could be like a hand like tens, jacks, queens, kings that are scared of the ace and betting small, trying to get value from some 9x hand. Um, it of course, could also be, you know, I could be out kicked here, ace king, ace queen, something like that. Um, that is just doing some pot control, um, seeing as the board does favor my big blind range. But um, we're gonna pay the off this off and see what he's got. Sixes. Here's another hand that I typically wouldn't play, but it is a nice suited card and it's only six handed, so let's raise it up. All I can think about with these three guys wearing sunglasses is like when you're a little kid and teacher goes, did you bring enough for everybody? And I'm just, I'm just raging inside, raging. Um, Kato's playing a lot of pots, so I'll go what I think think in deep stack that I don't know is one pip below appropriate. This hand, this flop looks like it hits him a lot more than me and I don't mind taking a free card, especially since I've got some draws that can develop. All right, so I didn't say anything on the flop because we're checking 100% of the time um, in our strategy. We don't have any donk leads. I know some wizards maybe mess around with donks. Um, and then they take up too much space, space including them in 100 big blind sims, which is... But anyway, again, fuck all that. I'm trying to just play exploitatively. I'm gonna bet big. Um, I have a hand with a lot of potential, except the problem is the board is already paired. I don't have a made hand. I have a feeling that Ryan's not just betting to bet. All those cards are in his wheelhouse since he's in the blind. And this is, is an over pot size bet. Even if I hit it, it may not be good. So I'm just gonna keep it simple and get this one up. Can we straddle? Probably for the best. Do, do, do. 